everyone. My name is Alyssa Goodo. I'm a connection coach and I actually had a question from someone um, about sustaining natural health. So the question is what things, people, and or places did you have to learn to avoid or limit in order to sustain your natural health? And the answer that I have is probably different than what was expected. But to be honest, um, sustaining my natural health was more about checking myself. Um, I had to really pinpoint that this was something that I was committed to, why I was committed to it, and I had to prioritize it above um, what I was feeling. So a lot of times whenever we, we, we do something, we tend to act out of feeling. Um, you know, eating a bunch of sugar and laying around all day um, rather than, you know, binging and watching Netflix all day instead of getting up and doing exercises. These things are so easy to get lost in, especially if you already have a routine for doing them. And something that I had to learn to get around was to not serve my feelings. Um, it, was, it was actually pretty hard to begin with just because whenever you're feeding your body things like a bunch of junk food, your body starts to create different, different things that makes you crave them even more. And it, it's, it's beyond just, um, it's beyond just your mind playing tricks on you, but to get around that, you have to, you have to actually get past that addictive sort of response that you have. You, uh, I physically had to tell myself, um, uh, let's say like, you know, the, the, the person that I live with, they love to drink soda. And I had to commit to not drinking soda whenever I got to a point where I was constantly having kidney infections and um, UTIs and kidney stones. Like I was having a lot of problems with my urinary system because I was drinking way too much caffeine versus no water at all. And especially because I really, I didn't drink a lot unless I was eating and I like to eat with soda. And so, um, I don't know why I think it just tastes better, but Oh, uh, I had to physically start telling myself whenever I would reach for a soda, I had to physically start telling myself, nope. And, and it, it took a lot of personal restraint on my part to just stop giving in to temptation. Uh, once I got to a place where I was, I, w I stopped, uh, I was really committed to it because, uh, and it helps whenever you have a, a physical motivator like that, you know, the pain of dealing with all that and the struggles, um, you know, you can't sit down properly. It hurts so bad after a while and you're having just these constant struggles. Um, whenever you have those sorts of things motivating you, it's a little bit easier to, to not give into the temptation because you don't want to have to go back to that place. Um, but as soon as the pain stops, you can kind of get trapped in that again. What I found that was interesting was whenever I stopped drinking soda and it, it would take a few weeks to get to a point where I was, I, I wasn't, I was no longer dehydrated and I was, I was properly hydrated again. It would take a little while to get back to this place. And then I would actually have to almost force myself to drink soda because it was so, it, it was so, um, bubbly and carbonated. It, it was spicy. It actually kind of burned. So you actually have to force yourself to go back to bad habits whenever you, you start getting into a good system. Um, I also started realizing instead of, um, at, for, for me personally, whenever I sit around uh, a lot, if I'm, you know, watching Netflix or whatever, whenever I'm not working, I, I kind of, get lost in my head a little bit too much and so I have to physically get up and do something and it literally took me sitting there and going why am I sitting here moping around or harping on this issue that I can't do anything about or why am I dwelling on it and so I started thinking about some of the things that I enjoy and I really enjoy dancing and I don't ever really get to do that anymore like I used to and so I put on some uh some Zumba and, or just, you know, some music that I like and I just start dancing. And even though it's not necessarily working out and doing it properly and all these sorts of things, just moving and getting myself into that, into that mindset was what was helpful. So really for the most part, what, what helped me sustain my natural health was really just getting to a place within myself where I stopped giving into the bad habits. And it takes a lot to get past that point because it's, because that's the hardest, that, that's the place where most of the growth is happening. Um, so 
really it's not so much about avoiding or limiting it was more about embracing the pain of growing so to speak but once you get to that place um it's not that hard to sustain uh you kind of just start it, you, you can get around people, you know, say, for example, you have all these temptations in your house if you live with different people who don't who don't have the same values that you do. Um, you start you start just having to instead of avoiding those things, um, you can't really do anything about them. So you kind of start adapting a, a mentality of. You don't really notice it anymore, I should say. Um, and whenever you're going out in public, you know that you're going to run into people who say, oh, you know, let's go to McDonald's or whatever. And you can just politely, you know, not even go there. You can just say, no, thanks. I'll go here or suggest a different place or go get your, you know, bring lunch from home. You know, there are ways to go about it. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't have to limit things or places so much. Um, the people, I would say, as far as natural health mentally was a totally different story. Um, there are people who are just toxic to you emotionally and giving into the emotional side of it is also what makes you physically do things that are bad for you as far as your natural health goes. And so uh, g getting rid of toxic people was, was the biggest thing um, uh, as far as limiting and avoiding. Uh, to do that and to kind of, it, it all goes back to your self-worth, your self-confidence, your self-respect. And so you have to sit and you really have to analyze yourself. Um, figure out what are the things that are most important to you? What are your most important values? What are your priorities? Um, and figure out, uh, are you compromising these things? because you want certain people in your life or because you have a certain expectation from other people. Um, whenever you start to go through these things, you can really, you can really realize how, how you're harming yourself in these ways. And I know this doesn't necessarily um, come to thought as a natural health topic, but the, the people that you surround yourself with mentally affects you and, and that really contributes to yourself to, to your physical self. So really sit back and think about why you have the relationships that you do, um, what kind of relationship you have with yourself, and what's most important to you and why. And whenever you start really getting really, really clear on these things, and that's why I say um, it's so important to have a good connection with yourself. Because if you have a good connection with yourself, then you really start to understand why you do the things that you do, where you're at in your healing process, why, why certain things were, were, um, were detrimental to you in, in your healing. It, you start to get really clear on, on what's going on in your life. So getting clear on yourself as far as um, what to avoid or limit for your natural health is a really big step. So I would say start there. Um, yeah, if you have any experience um with what you know your your self-confidence how you built that how you built your self-worth and self-respect those sorts of things if you have anything uh like that comment let me know i'd love to hear from you subscribe watch some more videos and i'm so thankful thank you for watching